In 2008, Oscar De La Hoya and Manny Pacquiao would face off for what was billed as the dream match. And for Manny Pacquiao, it was because Pac-Man would have a chance to fight his idol, the man who had been his inspiration all the way back when he stowed aboard a rickety ship in hopes of landing his first fight at 16. To the public, it was a meeting between the pound-for-pound -pound king, Pacquiao, and the bona fide pay-per-view superstar and legend, Oscar De La Hoya, who was looking for one last run. It was an unexpected crossroads for both athletes, given their age difference and, most notably, their size difference. While he's probably a little underrated today, De La Hoya is an incredibly accomplished fighter with world titles across six weight classes and a resume that's as good as any in the sport. He was an undeniable box office draw who faced serious opposition, matching up with names like Mayweather, Mosley, Julio Cesar Chavez, and Hopkins. A win over De La Hoya would instantly make Manny a household name. Boxing pundits weren't crazy about the fight though, pointing to De La Hoya's massive size advantage. For context, this fight was at 147 pounds. Before this bout, the highest weight Manny had fought for was 135 pounds. He had come in at 130, and he had only jumped up that fight. The matchup would be interesting as De La Hoya was a natural southpaw who opted for an orthodox stance, leading with his left foot even though he was left-handed. So, the orthodox stance enhanced his sublime jab, one of the best in the sport. He was a tactical aggressor, often reserved in the early rounds, but once he saw an opportunity, he would capitalize in stunning fashion. His pinpoint, powerful jab set the stage for his offense, the true definition of a boxer puncher. Pac-Man was a natural powerhouse, a southpaw whose game plan was equal parts blazing foot speed and rocket-fueled explosiveness. Unlike De La Hoya, Pacquiao placed his power left hand behind him, and needless to say, he made great use of that. Experts were curious of Pac-Man's foot speed, and unusual angles would keep him safe from Oscar's long, piston-like jab. Many weren't convinced that Manny's power could bother the bigger man. All these would factor in, and under the watchful eye of an excited public, the dream match would serve as an inflection point in the history of boxing. Pacquiao would stand across the ring, prepared to retire his hero. As expected, Oscar tried to jab and bully Pacquiao into the ropes and into corners. In round one, he clearly demonstrated he had the ability to do so. Using calculated and patient aggression, he pumped out his lead hand and stepped at angles to close off escape routes. But when he did manage to corral Manny against the ropes, Pacquiao slipped and weaved until Oscar overcommitted. He then used the temporary lapse in balance and position to dart away. De La Hoya tried to catch him, but he was always just a bit too slow in turning to line up his shots. Meanwhile, Pac-Man had found he could use one of his favorite attacks, slipping outside to avoid any incoming jabs and throwing a tight straight left to pierce right through the middle of Oscar's guard. Both boxers now had something to worry about. While Pacquiao's counter cross was a powerful weapon, Oscar's strategy could potentially deal much more damage. And he had already proved he could corner Manny in the very first round. Pac-Man's coach, Freddie Roach, the man who had taken a chance on him when no one else would, told Manny to stay off the ropes. Compared with the fight-ending alterations he normally suggested, it was pretty basic advice. But it was certainly the right advice. Pacquiao's solution to this was to rebound and angle off the ropes with a looping left hand. Let's get off there, and he gets off by hitting Oscar. Oscar and De La Hoya look tight. 
But beyond this, Manny circled and darted back and forth, so that Oscar had no idea where he would be from one second to the next. And the hand speed. Now watch when De La Hoya moves to his left to cut off the ring. That is when Pacquiao charges him. Let the ring be cut off. When Oscar moves to his left, watch and see if Pacquiao then decides that's the time to charge. He also refused to be backed up by De La Hoya's jab, instead baiting him to punch so that he could speed up his rhythmic head movement to the last second, making him miss just in time. Jab with that stiff left hand and jab, taking it for the head of Manny, and Manny Bobby weaving, duck, duck, uh, diving, ducking, he's not being hit by the jab. He even baited and countered De La Hoya's jab to cross under it with a lead uppercut, one of the hardest to pull off, but coolest looking counters in boxing. In and out, and that's exactly the way Manny Pacquiao is fighting right now. There's the uppercut. Straight left hand. Oscar failed entirely to build on his strategy in the second. Oscar's coach, Nacho Bearstein, who had trained some of the greatest fighters to ever live, admonished him, telling him not to walk in without jabbing and to mix in some body blows. De La Hoya listened and executed, doing much, much better in the third. The Golden Boy doubled, tripled, and even quadrupled up short, half-extended jabs. The faster tempo of attacks meant that Manny was often too preoccupied staying safe to counter or attack himself. The body shots also worked well, being naturally very effective against fighters who like to rely on lateral movement. Because the body is a much bigger target, and of course more stationary than the head, Oscar now had a chance to cut Manny off at the pass. He's trying to go through the Pacquiao jab and get that right hand in. He's starting to roll up for the nap. Oscar loaded up a couple of shots and both were taken on the back. Body shots take away a fighter's legs over time. But Pacquiao seemed to like this idea too, and started going after De La Hoya's midsection near the end of the round. And this was true in the fourth as well. As strange as it seems, one of Pacquiao's tendencies has always been to try and pay his opponent's back by retaliating in the exact same way. Like that one friend that has to one-up every story you tell, Pacquiao refused to let his opponents feel good about their achievements. Each time Oscar landed to the body, Pacquiao immediately returned the favor. Whether this was due to hyper-competitiveness or an actual tactic, it paid off just the same. The way that Pacquiao went from throwing barely any body shots in the first few rounds to adding them to most of his combinations was the straw that broke the camel's back. He lands as a right hand fist from the straw of De La Hoya. This is a defining round in the fight. The uppercut. Oscar's having a tough time right now with Manny Pacquiao. It's a four to one ratio in power punches. Oscar was forced to lower his guard, which would uncover his head or duck and hunch to keep both protected at the same time. But this leveled his head right in front of the power-punching politician's punches. Over the next several rounds, Pacquiao would only build on his advantages, showcasing his unique skill set to perfection against one of the best boxers of his generation. To start, Pacquiao got even better at timing his left, even doubling up. His unique footwork greatly helped him in closing the distance against the taller fighter. Pacquiao would often hop off his front foot for extra space, and this bizarre movement worked to reload his punches, giving extra oomph to the second punch even though it was much shorter than the first. Incredibly, this one counter alone had completely taken away De La Hoya's jab. Pac-Man also dialed in his draws and counters, inviting De La Hoya to punch so that he could duck under and return fire. Compounding the Golden Boy's problems was Pacquiao's ability to suddenly stop circling and change directions to attack, essentially walking him into a weak position. And Pacquiao started adding body shots into the mix, slipping inside to target the stomach, 
Since body shots naturally draw the guard lower, these punches opened up a lot of potential combinations for Manny. Since Oscar fought with his torso so squared up, it was easy for Manny to use the shot to open or tighten his guard so that he could attack the new opening created with his next punch. Any fighter like Pacquiao who risks throwing more than three punches in a row can expect a counter, but Manny would use his footwork to change angles so often that De La Hoya, who liked to fight coming forward, never had time to set down and throw. To the body with any viciousness at all. And look at Manny, look at the amount of punches he's throwing there. And the two for him. Oscar's uh, left eye closing up with that jab and the left hand falling it. And now here he tries me for Oscar. Even when he opens up, Pacquiao is landing more shots. Oscar did land a few beautiful counters, using his longer range to swat around Pacquiao's jab. But just like with the body shots, each time De La Hoya scored, Pacquiao came back with an increased tempo. Yeah, in, this fight. In, in losing efforts to Bernard Hopkins, to Mayweather, twice to Shane Mosley and Felix Trinidad, he didn't look this bad. De La Hoya had cannons that he needed to place into position, but Pacquiao could shoot off rapid-fire machine gun shots from any place and any time. By round seven, Pacquiao was backing De La Hoya up and landing the large majority of his punches. Pacquiao continues to bounce around up on his toes and he's been this way into this fight. Oscar again tentative with the... Oscar not getting off right hands. He's out fought Oscar De La Hoya in the power department by a ratio of about three to one. You know, he, he gets... knows, he knows it, but whether you get the body to do that, whether you take advantage of those split-second opportunities is a different story. Left hand, so what does Pacquiao do? He cracks him with the right hand. He's working on that left eye. At first, Manny actually seemed incredulous, but he pressed forward anyways. When Oscar allowed himself to be bullied into a corner, the normally unshakable pressure fighter appeared even more surprised. Perhaps Pacquiao suspected a trap, or maybe it was hard to believe that he had attained the skill level to just pulverize the man he had admired for so long. But after taking a moment to collect himself, Manny pressed forward. The veteran boxer tried to escape, but needed to reach out and steady himself on the ropes. Pacquiao easily cut him off and went right back to work. De La Hoya put up his guard and bit down on his mouthpiece, staring defeat in the face, but soldiering on nonetheless. After eating an entire fight's worth of punches in under a minute, the golden boy finally got off the ropes. Pacquiao pursued until the tail end of the round. Back up against the ropes and then he's on the assault. La Hoya! And he nailed him with the right hand. He's all over right now. Lost his hurt. When De La Hoya came back from the dead, charging forward to give whatever he had left, but Pacquiao stopped him with a single jab. To the astonishment of all, himself included, Pacquiao's golden idol had melted under the intense heat of his offensive fire. While many expected the fight called then and there, the respect for De La Hoya's championship pedigree convinced those involved to let him have one round to prove he was still in the fight. Through the round, Oscar was outpaced, outboxed, and outpositioned. But he never stopped moving forward and fighting his way off the ropes. For his part, Manny seemed to stick to thudding body shots, maybe hoping to leave the boxer he had looked up to so much as undamaged in the long term as possible. Miraculous move on Oscar De La Hoya. As I say that, Pacquiao pours the pressure on him, and this might be the miraculous finish of the career. Once more, De La Hoya surged forward with a final flurry, the last of his career. And once again, he stayed on his feet, if barely, when Pacquiao threw his well-deserved final barrage. Don't mess with this guy. And the power shots are right downstairs, and look at Pacquiao battle to the end of the eighth round, trying to stop Oscar. It was a fitting last round for a great champion who had never ducked a fight and never disappointed. Win or lose. It's, it. it's all over, the fight is stopped. An upset, a huge upset. A tremendous victory for Manny Pacquiao. After the fight, Manny expressed to De La Hoya that he was still his idol. De La Hoya responded, no. Now you're mine. 
the Golden Boy retired after this bout and focused full time on Golden Boy promotions. As he exited boxing's limelight, Pacquiao was there to take his place atop the biggest marquees and world title main events. It was a true passing of the torch in the unique way that only boxing can deliver. If you'd like to learn more about the sweet science or other combat sports, you can check out my books, link below. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training. Also, Mortal Weapons 2 out next time. Still your idol. Still your idol. Whatever, whatever happened.